what's up, boys and girls? Chef PV. Um, checking in today. Zero Ground FPV. Uh, Team B Rotor. All that stuff. But today, 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 we are going to tackle um, soft mounting. Soft mounting flight controllers and the newest kind of um, topic that everybody is um, on one side of the fence or the other about, which is soft mounting motors, uh, is something that I wanted to kind of just touch on my thoughts, on my experience with going ahead and soft mounting some motors, and with my experience in soft mounting FCs and when and why um, that's ever even necessary, if at all, and how all of this kind of shakes together and correlates. <clears throat> There's a lot of arguing going on out there. There's people that... Um, first, people are giving Johnny Share or Johnny FEV kind of credit for starting this whole phenomenon, if you would, or um, craze or arguing, whatever it is. However, soft mounting um, goes way back. And it, it wasn't the, the race flight guys and it wasn't the Lux, um, you know, flight controller or MPU 6000 um, gyro that necessarily... Um, or wait, it's the 6500, I'm sorry, the 6500 that um, necessarily started soft mounting. Soft mounting has been a thing um, for quite a while in different areas of not just multi-rotors, but all kinds of, you know, RC and mechanical engineer or mechanical um, situations, including your, you know, vehicle, which is tossed out there a lot. The car you drive has your motor soft mounted, essentially. Um, but what is soft mounting? Why why is it even something to talk about or look at? And what is currently being kind of misconstrued or mixed up in these arguments? Um, so we'll talk about that. So we have here a Team Sasquatch Labs Shuriken 180 uh, frame. I'm just using for mock-up here. It's got a KISS flight controller in it, and it's actually got an all-in-one uh, ESC down below. But... Uh, this flight controller and this ESC setup and this frame setup currently is not soft mounted anywhere. It is hard mounted and the motors are also hard mounted, um, but the flight controller also is. And so what does that mean? Soft mounting your flight controller means that you allow the mounting to have a little bit of play in the board shifting or moving or even vibrating. So you're creating a dampening um, kind of force within the mounting surfaces of the flight controller. Now, I've done this a few different ways. Um, with the, the Lux flight controllers that I've had in the past, I actually um, was using double-sided foam tape to simply mount the board to whatever was below it, which in my case was PDBs. So I was layering the PDB in at the bottom, and then I was just double stick taping the flight controller in place. Now I did use standoffs, nylon ones like this, but without any nuts, and that allowed for a floating um, flight controller. But this one right here is what we would consider hard mounted, and I've never had a problem with hard mounting specific um, boards other than the Lux, or some people say that the Revolt um, needs to be soft mounted as well because of its um, very sensitive gyro. So what does the soft mounting of the flight controller do and why would you do it? Um, in the sense of the Lux and the Revolt, which are two very similar situations of a very sensitive or in the Lux situation, just not the best gyro to take or to use, um, you soft mount the flight controller because there's a lot of vibrations going on that affect the gyro, which is basically what tells the copter to do what it does based off of its information. So by disrupting the gyro with stuff that is not flight um, data, if you would, so characteristics of flight, you actually introduce more information into the load of the flight controller. It has to process that and work through it. And it basically kind of doesn't know what to do. It, it doesn't see the motors rotating. It knows it has motors rotating and all that, but it doesn't see them and it doesn't see, you know, the, the hardware used and it doesn't see, well, this is carbon fiber or and in some situations, this is maybe, um, you know, a plastic um, frame. It doesn't know the differences between it and so doesn't know how to filter it out. So that's up to you to tune. 
So before soft mounting came into play, um, you would tune those out with your filters. <clears throat> but then people started realizing that some overly sensitive gyros and things like that um, needed more dampening. So they would actually just put O-rings in or you could use little dampened standoffs that they now make. And what that would do, would that would eliminate some of the excess um, you know, clutter of the vibrations going and getting transferred from frame to the to the, the the flight controller so that allows it to only focus hopefully more on only characteristics that are um, and only vibrations and things caused by the physical tuning and the flying of the aircraft so that's how people were dealing with it um, more recently Johnny FEV did bring the light that he threw electrical tape down underneath and it's a couple of layers beneath his motors and he was able to get some additional um, noise out of his tune. And people are on one side of the fence or the other. They either buy into it and they're all trying to figure out how to soft mount and what to do and all that, or and typically don't really understand it. And two, you have the other people that are saying that it's completely worthless, it's pointless, you're taking out, um, you're basically just filtering out just like you can with the settings on the board, which to them is a better way of doing it. So they're saying, well, just soft mount your board and filter them out with the software. I mean, that's an answer and it works and it gets you a great buttery tune and all of that. Um, there's no reason not to do it that way, I suppose. But the way that I look at it is when people start soft mounting the board, you actually are eliminating some of the outside frame um, kind of distinct, um, distinguishable characteristics that are transferring vibrations into it. So now you're masking what's beneath it. So by soft mounting the gyro or the board, you're basically saying, well, I'm going to just kind of take all this and just kind of mask it. But what happens also is under heavy movements or heavy flight characteristics, in theory, G-forces and other forces could still act and move the board or cause miscalculations because of the board shifting or moving or what it, whatnot. So why mask out the characteristics with software? Why try to turn a blind eye to it? To me, the better solution, and if you look back to um, a lot of the different people that are involved with hardware development and that know what they're talking about when it comes to gyros and flight controllers, um, they'll tell you that you don't want to soft mount your flight controller, that you want it to know what's going on, that you want it to take in all the information. Now, what you can do from there is you can mitigate the vibrations going into it by one, overall frame design. Frame design has a huge impact on vibrations. Different frames resonate at different frequencies. So by just simply designing a low vibration frame, you can take away a lot of vibration. Now you get to the mounting of the motors. Well, people argue that your motor in your, hel in your um, car out in your garage actually has soft mounted motors. And it does. And that's true. Um, and there's a reason. Because that motor shifts around and moves so much by putting it on dampeners, um, you can get a smoother and more controlled ride and feel out of the vehicle. So if I do that same thing to my quad before I go in and tune it, so this is from a straight brand new build, I go in and I dampen these motors with the appropriate uh, material, the best material would be, you know, something like a, a nice, decent rubber, like, um, I don't know, like a one millimeter thick kind of maybe a bicycle tube or a really thick motorcycle or a car tube. Um, something like that would probably dampen and take away a lot of good vi of the bad vibration from the motor. Um, you're not going to eliminate it all. There, this isn't about, well, how do I take all the vibration out? If you're going to do it, you better do it all. No. If I can eliminate 80% of the dampening or the, the vibration that comes from the four motors, then by time I actually install a hard mounted flight controller or if you want to soft mount it because it has to, but maybe you wouldn't have to, um, I would just go ahead and hard mount my flight controller now. So I've dampened the outside forces on the frame, but the frame is still the frame and it's still going to affect the flight controller the way it is. And now I can go in and I can tune from that point. 
adding um, soft mounting motors to an already tuned copter, you're going to see a difference. I've seen it. I'm not going to put data up because the data shows um, that there is a clear difference in motor noise, but people will argue about, you know, the debugging on it and, you know, well, what is the motor noise and all that. I can tell you that this quad, the quad that I'd put um, soft mount on, it is not perfect yet, but I felt a significant change in the prop wash, which was the only part that I could not get tuned out with those heavy drops right near the ground or something like that, or really heavy turns where you just drop throttle and then punch it. Um, that little bit of skip, I just could not get that last bit out. It's about 90% gone now. It's still there in small spurts, but it is quite easily recognizable as gone. Um, and I have two quads that fly the exact same uh, PIDs, so that's the other thing. And have the exact same motor set up, so I can see that difference quite, quite easily um, in the copter. But that's my take on it. You take whatever you want from it. My thoughts is this. Soft mount your motors a little bit. Put the five layers of electrical tape, or I, I would get, like I said, some little rubber pads. Put some rubber pads under there. Don't go buy anything. You don't need to spend money on it. But if you can do that pre-tune and then drop in your boards and all your other stuff and then go tune it, I think you'll end up with a better result. So there's that. Um, look for more later, I'm sure. But let's just stop arguing, guys. Soft mount or not, just do what you do. Fly what you fly. Fly safe, fly smart. Just fly. Peace.